and welcome to the MMA Power Hour Super Session. So happy to be with you guys and girls for this special interview. And uh, so let's jump right into it. I'm so happy to have this next guest on the show. Been a fan of his for several years now. One of the more exciting fighters in the entire world of MMA and the UFC. A big fight coming up March 2nd against Zeppi Megamed Sharapov. We're talking about none other than the little heathen himself, Jeremy Stevens. Welcome to the show, Jeremy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Not a problem. Really glad to have you, man. How are you feeling? You're, you're eight days out from the fight. Uh, do, you, do you feel the same way eight days out from every fight? I'm sure some cuts are better than others, but I would imagine you probably got things kind of down to a science, or am I wrong? Yeah, uh, definitely. I'm feeling very good. My weight is really uh, great right now. I'm feeling light. It's ready to go. You know, I'm, I've been I've been ready for a long time. I've been taking advantage of the opportunity outside of camp. This has uh, been a great camp for me. I've been in camp for probably about 12 to 14 weeks. I've been training for this fight, and uh, just mentally, physically ready to rock. I could go uh, tonight if they asked me to fight. I'd, I'd be ready. Fantastic. I'm ready. Fantastic. And are you still in Iowa, or have you made the trip to Vegas yet? I'm in San Diego. I'm, uh, I've been in, living in San Diego for about 10 years. But uh, my home and uh, my family is always in uh, Iowa. That's where my uh, my roots are. Makes sense. Yeah, I should have I should have been aware of that. My bad, not knowing that. But I appreciate you pointing that out, and probably a lot of our fans didn't. So I know you're an Iowa boy, but you're in San Diego. And uh, you're training over at Alliance, or where do you train mostly in San Diego? Yes, I train uh, mostly. All my training is done. Pretty much all my training is done at Alliance MMA. Uh, you know. You know, but uh, doors are always open. You know, I've, I've trained with uh, Andre Galvao at Team Atos. Uh, I have a Muay Thai coach out there, John XLBs that I trained with. He has his own gym. Uh, but all my training, MMA training, is with uh, the head coach, Eric Del Fiero, and Alliance MMA. Absolutely. <laughs> always had a lot of respect for Eric Del Fiero. Uh, and, uh, you know, absolutely anyone training there is definitely is someone serious. I know Dominic Cruz is there a lot. And then Brandon Vera. Who else uh, Who else is uh, training over at Alliance nowadays? Man, everybody. Uh, you know, uh, Phil Davis, Dominic Cruz, Ross Pearson, Alex uh, Gustin has been, been uh, over through there. Uh, you know, ton, tons of uh, young up and up and comers. You know, uh, Guido Perez. Uh, you know, uh, Darion Caldwell. You know, the 135 pound champ of Bellator. Uh, there's there's tons of guys over there, and, and tons of young, hungry up and comers uh, that that always come in. And uh, those are the guys that I really like to be around the most. Is the is the new young, hungry up and comers? You even know they may lack some uh, fight skill. Uh, it's good to put yourself around the situation. Everything's new to them. Uh, they come at you with a different type of uh, heart, different type of character when they're sparring. And it's always good to kind of get those, uh, those, those feels uh, from, from the newbies because they bring that certain hunger, that certain edge uh, to the game. And uh, it's it's rejuvenating for me, you know, to to go and and be trained with them guys. And even like when guys get like some of their big fights, we get to go and train with them. It's good to see how just like open and new they are. Like, wow, this is the UFC. Wow, like look at this, look at that. And sometimes, you know, when you get older, you get going through the process. It seems kind of like routine, and that can kind of mess with your head a little bit. So getting around that young, like grateful, hungry experience really uh, helps me go back to like originally like where I started, how I started, why I started, and uh, really gets me back to my purpose and brings back that young, hungry, uh, ruthless, savage kid that was, you know, 21 in the UFC. And it's a good feeling. Absolutely, and that sounds like a really great situation and atmosphere to be in and that you're really plugged into knowing that that benefits you and that uh, helps motivate you. And speaking of the fact that you were 21 in the UFC, you're you're one of these interesting anomalies in that you're a veteran, but you're still young. At 32, you know, you're definitely still young enough that no one needs to talk about you retiring anytime soon. That's kind of a good position to be in, I'm sure you know, but... How do how how do you feel as compared to let's say five six seven years ago and even ten years ago as far as obviously you're a lot more experienced but you're still young enough you've still got that intensity and reflexes but what are some of the differences in in how you feel as a fighter and a competitor uh, as compared to say six or seven eight years ago? 
Uh, you know, when I first started, you know, really technically on paper, a lot of guys should have beat me. Rafael Dos Anjos should have beat me. Even guys like Ted Worthington that were around in Des Moines a long time ago, they should have beat me. Uh, I was just a kid with heart. I didn't really have any cardio. I didn't have any fight skills. I lacked a lot of uh, skills. But what I carried was heart and just savageness. And I carried a lot of uh, just pain and experience of a rough childhood, and rough upbringings. And I brought that to the game. And I gave uh, uh, an attitude that says, I'm, I'm never going to give up. I'm never going to just just quit. I'm never going to stop being a person who's growing and changing and evolving and adapting and just putting more and more knowledge into my game. That's what's really what kept me around all these years is just my never die, can't break me type attitude. You know, even me, I, 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 you know, I lose a fight. It's really I learn from that fight. I get a bunch of data that I get from each and every fight, and I'm like, okay, this went wrong. Here's a list of what I shouldn't be doing, and here's a list of, like, what I did in the fight that went wrong. Okay, I can actually take that data, and I can actually work with that. I can make those changes. I can grow as a person in and outside of the ring, and I can adapt to anything in life, anything that life throws at me. And that's just an attitude that I carry around throughout life, not just martial arts. Martial arts is my lifestyle. I don't do camps because I'm constantly training. You know, uh, I'm taking my kids on bike rides. I'm swimming. You know, I, I do other things outside of just being in the gym. That is constantly always making me evolve and get better. Such things as just running or wh whatever it may be. Uh, this is a lifestyle for me, and that's just an attitude that I have. I really submerge myself in the experience. I wasn't born like this. I was an insecure, picked on, bully type kid who really submerged myself into these experiences and made myself as hard as I am today. I like that, and I think that really is the right choice. Of all the professional fighters at the high level that you've known, what percentage of them do you think have embraced and adopted uh, that lifestyle like you, and what percentage of them will just get in shape for fights and the rest of the time they're eating you know, pizza and McDonald's and drinking beer and staying out partying all night? I would say if uh, I would probably say the ma the majority are, are doing that, and if it's probably about a three percent or less that are actually living a type of lifestyle that are, that are that are doing that, you know, um, you know, it's not me to judge anybody. I've I've been that guy before to uh, make a ton of money and go do self sabotage to myself, and uh, you know, you either live and learn. You know, it's it's uh, it's on their experience and in their journey where they may be able to get it or they don't, you know, and some people go through life 40, 50, 60 years old, never, never really seeing things face to face as in, in fighting, you get exposed. A lot of people can criticize my job and criticize what I do, but they really, in reality, they don't have the balls to do what I do, or do they have that type of life experience? They'll go through their whole life working at a job, settling for this, settling for that, where I've actually taken risks went out and did something, you know, like I was talking to my buddy, Miles Dirty Day, come over to my house and I'm like, man, I would have hate to been 90 years old. Like, man, like what if I, you know, I, maybe I was three and oh in, in UFC or, or maybe in an MMA career. And what, what if I never knew that I never, if I would have never taken this risk. And then one day I showed up to, to God and he's like, man, I had this plan for you, Jay. You would have been the champion in 2019. If you would have just kept going back in 2007, when you, when, if, if you would have quit or whatever it may be. So everybody has their own journey and you can learn from that. Like I've learned from others. I learned from my parents. I've learned from other people's mistakes. I've learned from other fighters as well as my own experience. So uh, we get the benefit, benefit of that as being a human being to be able to make those changes. And it's a choice in life. And if uh, you're ready for it, you're ready for it and you'll, you'll grow on and adapt. If not, you know, you'll uh, keep going down that uh, lonely road. Absolutely, and it is a slippery slope, that lonely road, that's for sure. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100% uh, in that wisdom, brother. I really appreciate you throwing that out there. Um, speaking of experience, the opponent you're, you're facing, Zabit Megamed Sharapov, once upon a time you were a fighter who was coming up who hadn't fought a lot of high-level guys like he has. What do you feel you've learned that has helped in, in you being able to, to 
take a big fight on a big stage with the bright lights that that maybe you didn't know back then not a, not to give away too many secrets but how do you feel like uh the comfort level that you have now as compared to probably what he has or what you had uh without all the experience can help someone who is facing someone who doesn't have that experience yet and who is jumping up a, a level in class and competition like he is to face you well, I, I still feel like uh, he's got a lot of holes in his game. He's very young. He's a very talented guy, no doubt about it. He wouldn't be where he's at. You know, uh, there's a lot of hype behind this kid, but in real reality, he's facing a guy who's dangerous, who can put him out in one shot. You know, you look at my highlight tape and then you look at his, I'm more scared of me than 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 that, that tape. You know, I, I'm more scared to train with myself because I just – uh, mentally, you know, you cannot break me. I, I go above and beyond and I push myself in training that, uh, I, you know, I do things that my coaches don't even tell me to do. I go out and do it just because that's the type of person I am. You can ask anybody in, in the room. I'm the hardest working motherfucker you'll ever meet. And I'm the first one there and I'm always the last one to leave. And I work in the dark and in the night I'm running, I'm doing things uh, that go above and beyond that really put me at a level to where I'm at today wasn't born like this. I made myself into the man that I am. As far as him, you know, uh, I really don't care anything about him or what he's doing. I know he comes from a great camp. I have a lot of respect for that. And uh, we're well prepared. Uh, he doesn't have the experience that I have. He doesn't have the, the fight IQ. He's never he's never faced anybody as, as vicious as me who can put his lights out. This is the biggest camp of his life. And I imagine that, you know, that's extra added pressure for him. He's having to train harder than ever. He's putting the pressure on himself. I'm cool as a cucumber. This is a typical day at the office, another fight in the playground. I'm going to go in there and handle business. Absolutely. Take him out to deep water and drown him, as the saying goes, right? <laughs> that boy can't swim. Now, <laughs> now, let me ask you, Do you are you someone that studies tape a lot? I'm sure you do to an extent. But is that something you, you like to do a lot or not so much? And, and have you done that? I know you said you've seen some holes in his game, so obviously you've watched some tape. But uh, what do you feel uh, are some of the interesting things that, that he presents as far as an opponent? Uh, interesting things that, that he presents. You know, he's, he's six foot one in a 145 pound division, but he's got a skinny frame, he's got skinny legs. Uh, he comes from a great camp. You know, he throws a lot of spinning, cool cool back stuff, but that's nothing really that I haven't ever seen. You know, I train with guys that are taekwondos and throw spinning stuff at me all the time. It's, it's nothing I'd ever seen. He's ever faced a fierce competitor as me, someone who's very skilled and very wise in the fight game and let alone has an intent to kill you. Yeah. Uh, intentions are very, very uh, dangerous and they're a very smooth tac tactical way. I'm cool, calm, like a bomb. And then once you feel that, you know, you're, you're exploded into a hundred pieces and you're asking your coaches and the referee what happened. Yep. Well, I'm just celebrating and keeping it cool. Uh, you know, he brings a lot of interesting uh, challenges to the game. This is why I like to face myself in these challenges. Most people in my situation don't have to face these challenges. I feel like if you know that you're the best, you'd be the best, you'll face anyone anytime. This is the fight business. I'm here to fight. I'm here to make a shit ton of money and use it as a mechanism to set myself financially free and uh, move on. Yep. This guy, uh, I just don't feel like he's ever been in a fight like 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 a person like me uh you know and we welcome the challenge you know we're, we're very we're very accepting for this fight and uh you know a lot of guys are running away from this kid a lot of guys don't don't take the fight you know i welcome this type of challenges because i just want to go and prove to him that i'm better than him all around and i'm going to prove it and i have no doubt about it i'm yeah. going to kill this guy absolutely absolutely i'm with you man and i'm cheering for you i'm a midwesterner originally myself from michigan uh my my co-producer and co-host adam rorda is originally from iowa man so he's been a huge yes. supporter yep and fan of yours so we'll definitely be cheering <clears throat> a lot of people know you for really good hands but you have done some wrestling so for people who think that if he comes in and decides to just focus on his uh, grappling and forget about his striking of some of the people that don't really know feel like somehow that could present huge problems for you. I have a feeling you're pretty confident in your wrestling skills and takedown defense. Well, I feel like I've already fought some of the best wrestlers in the game, and they, they, they're not able to hold me down. You may be able to take me down, but you're not going to hold me down. I'm not Conor McGregor. I don't rely on jujitsu. I'm a wrestler. I'm from Iowa. I know how to get up. I have more ways than one to get up, and I'm not scared of being taken down. And not only do I have hands, uh, you know, I've knocked people out with spinning back fists, my right hand, my left hook, my knees, my shins. 
you know, I can knock people out with any tool on my body. I can knock people out with these cauliflower ears. Just give me the chance, you know? Uh, so I, I'm well prepared. I'm not scared to be taken down. I'll get up. You take me down 10 times, I'll get up and I'll present an opportunity where I'm going to capitalize and break you. And you, you know, then you got to match my cardio. And one thing that you cannot, cannot see that's that's not on paper is my mindset my mental you know you know people can tell you how hard i hit he'll ask his he'll ask his uh buddy frankie edgar how hard does jeremy stevens hit well he hits this hard well he does this well he gets up well you're not going to know that until you get in there and we'll see where what his chin's like we'll see what his legs are like we'll see what his body's like and we'll see where he's at mentally when he faces somebody who's ferocious like me so yep. again we're excited for the challenge and uh looking to do damage absolutely not to look past uh, as a beat as i know you're not but uh when you get by him it's going to be an interesting log jam <clears throat> at the top with max holding the the belt as well as brian ortega still up there uh uh possibly frankie edgar even though he lost to brian ortega uh yair rodriguez and uh jose aldo should you get by <clears throat> zabit which which i know you will uh who would you like to see next and i would imagine you'd feel you may be in line for a title shot or one fight away but indulge me for a second not to look back and no disrespect to zabit but after that fight what would you like to be the next one for you and who would you like to see i know you got history with a couple of the uh, aforementioned gentlemen yeah exactly you know i'd love a rematch with aldo i would take on that alexander the the number four guy i will take out brian ortega you know and anybody just call me the can man anybody can get it an american a mexican a republican anybody can get it this is the fight business i'm here to fight i don't like to sit back and pick and choose i'm fighting a number 10 guy and i'm number six in the world just put me in the fight and i'll handle business and I'll just tell you one thing, my goal in 2019, my big juicy fat goal is to be the unden undeniable number one contender, if not the number one guy next in line for a title shot. That is my big fat goal. And like I said, anybody can get it. Absolutely. And I like that you threw in Alex uh, Volkanovsky, the Australian. He was definitely impressive uh, against Chad Mendez in that fight. I saw that in person. <clears throat> you have history with the champ, uh, Max Holloway. Uh, both of you, I think that was what, four years back, five years back? Yeah. Uh, and I had him uh, come out and uh, help me train for Anthony Pettis. And he's uh, went on and, and, and with his journey, and he's, he's living a great life right now. He's got a tremendous career. Uh, Max is a guy that uh, I'll always, you know, always remember. I'll never forget the friendship that we had. And uh, this is the fight business. You know, if we happen to collide again, it's uh, no, no bad blood. You know, we're just two competitors and we're two ferocious guys. And uh, I imagine the second fight would be a lot more entertaining than the first fight. I feel like there was just a lot of respect between us. It was just kind of weird, but I feel like moving forward and moving on, we would, uh, we would definitely give the fans a great show. And especially if he would fight me like uh, he's been fighting everybody else in the game. It'd make for a great fight and one of the best fights ever to be seen. Absolutely. I think so, man. I think that would be super exciting, uh, as would a rematch with Aldo, uh, Ortega, Yair, you know, uh, and then just this fight was a beat. What a stacked card, though, man. Does it matter to you or does it excite you at all that there are these other amazing matchups like yours on that March 2nd card, or do you just focus on your own thing? Uh, I kind of just do my own thing, but you know, in my life, you go back, man, I've, I've been on some, some of the biggest cards ever in history. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just, uh, it's always amazing. It just, it brings excitement. I love when the fans are just going nuts and screaming and they're excited for the main event. And then I just come sliding on and sleep somebody and uh, everybody's talking about me. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them guys that you put me on a big card and this is the reason why they put me on these cards like this. You know, they, they know what they're getting with me. UFC's kept me around a long time because they know that I come to fight. I show up. I don't back down. I come forward and I put on a show and I don't have to do anything. Uh, it's not something that I'm not. That's just me. Uh, they know I love the fight. The way I bring it's entertaining. And uh, the fans are in for a real treat with this one absolutely i'm really excited about it and uh i think it's going to be an amazing fight man it's going to be all action you care would you care to throw out any muhammad ali like predictions other than uh a win or like like my other favorite prediction was from rocky three when they asked clubber if he had any predictions for his rematch with rocky and he said predictions and they said yes predictions and he says pain so <laughs> yeah, yeah that's good that's definitely common when you're fighting me there ain't no doubt about it but uh 
you know, hey, you even dream of whooping me, you better wake up and apologize. No, I love it. I love it. Well, I tell you, man, you've got the confidence as you always have, and I know everything's on track. You're over in San Diego. When do you get to Vegas? Three, four days in advance, two, one, or is that a secret? I'll get out there Tuesday, fight week. Fantastic. Another uh, Iowa guy out there is going to be taking care of me. I got to give him a shout out. No neck, Brian Keck. You know, he runs all the wrestling tournaments out there. I'm sure everybody knows and heard of him. Uh, give a shout out. You know, he's uh, he's 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 been a uh, big fan and a brother along alongside. He's my wrestling coach. He's moving back out to San Diego. Uh, so shout out, uh, no neck, Brian Keck. Absolutely, and my uh, co-producer Adam Rota from Iowa has been nodding his head when you said that, so he knows him. Anyone from Alliance fighting on that card with you, or you're the only one? Uh, just me, man. This guy, I get to enjoy all this moment just to myself, man. I can just smell it damn near taste it the time's ticking and you know it's just killing time before killing time i look forward to it man well in the last minute we have you jeremy anything else you want to shout out any sponsors you want to thank or any of your coaches anyone that's been helping you here not to give out any secrets uh in the training feel free to throw that out uh, i just want to thank my beautiful wife for setting this interview up you know my iowa roots i gotta stay loyal to them you know uh, tell adam uh thank you thank you guys for the support the 515 the midwest uh, you know, I'm a Midwest monster, man. I'm always supporting my roots. Uh, I want to thank my wife for setting this up, my beautiful family, uh, my head coach, Eric Del Fierro, uh, everybody who's been helping me out, Coach Miguel Reyes, Nikki P, all my alliance training partners, uh, John X, my Muay Thai coach, you know, everybody who's just been along for the ride for so many years, you know, uh, just thank you so much. I guess I never really get to uh, take time to, to do that. You know, I could probably get hit by a beer truck tomorrow. So, Thanks for everybody who's been a long part of my journey, supported me, showed nothing but love, uh, and always wishing me and uh, keeping me in their uh, their heart and their good graces, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And uh, as always, I look forward to putting on a show for you guys and giving you guys my heart. Absolutely. Well, I really look forward to it as well. I'll be cheering for you, brother, and man, and go kill it. Go do what you always do. Thank you, brother. 515, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> Have a great night. You too, man. Have a great Thanks. weekend. You too. Take care. Jeremy Stevens, one of my favorite fighters, super exciting guy. Iowa boy, Dr. Adam Rorta is all over. Dr. Adam Rorta is probably one of the guys that doesn't give Zabit even a remote chance of winning, whereas a lot of people are feeling that, that Zabit uh, is the favorite. Um, it's it's a really interesting matchup. I, you know, I've been calling out Zabit for a while, being a tough guy. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and, and renounce that or denounce that but jeremy's an amazing guy jeremy might just be his kryptonite uh i as you all all pretty much know i do tend to cheer for the veteran fighters i have 32 jeremy is not any kind of an old grizzled vet veteran but i think he's older than zabit so i think i will go out there and cheer for usa and the midwest uh with jeremy stevens and think that he could do what he says he's going to do and possibly be uh, the guy that that puts a halt to this run uh from zabit megamed sharapov the winner uh will absolutely be seriously in title contention uh and jeremy sounds strong and focused and, uh, you know, really looking forward to an amazing performance from him. So that will conclude this super session. Uh, look out for your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your pets. Make sure they're inside, they're warm, and they have their water and food. It's a cold winter. Be good to yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, spread the love in a positive way. Be that guy, be that girl, and, uh, you know, the love will come back to you tenfold. We will look forward to catching you on our Wednesday night regular show. But uh, hope you've enjoyed this one. And uh, for our whole staff here, Dr. Adam Rorta and the MMA Power Hour, this is Colin Crandall. And for this MMA Power Hour Super Sessions, I'm tapping out. <laughs>